rolling. Make sure my phone's on silent. Well, uh, this is an interesting topic this week. Going to be talking about uh, breaking out of the minor leagues. And that's not really like, hey, I'm, I'm a sick guitar player. How to be sick. It's more about a business aspect and it's a mental approach. That said, let's play a tune. This is a tune off the new record. I hope you enjoy it. I hope I play it well. And we'll see how, how it goes. This one's title track of the new record. Yeah. Yeah.
nice little fun tune there. Kind of the uh, the happiest moment of the new record. Let me just hit the mute on this and turn that off, and then I'm good to go and hang out. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Uh, was just thinking about your shows in Massachusetts from Indonesia. Regards, cheers, uh, cheers to the uh, Exact Tone folks for hanging out. Modern instrumental guitar song that's not just a shred backing track. I mean, that's it, right? The whole new record is about songs. And that's a great segue. Um, that's a great segue into what I want to talk about today. And at the risk of sounding super egotistical and uh, not friendly, let me, let me zoom this out. Give me just a second to bring that out. Just a sniff. There we go. Um, you know, I want to, I want to talk about some stuff that's going to be like hot buttony kind of thing, kind of hot button topics. And, uh, it's about like breaking through that glass ceiling, uh, getting out of the minor leagues and getting into the big leagues. Now this can be about, um, getting into professional environments. Yes. All of the things that are, most of the things I'm going to talk about can be about getting into professional environments. More importantly, it's about how you can, progress in your career and your life as a musician and not have that glass ceiling over your head. Okay. Now let me talk about a couple of things. The glass ceiling is what separates you from the guys that go out and play their music for a living, whether that be me, right. Or Nick Johnston or Mark Letary or Andy Timmons or Joe Satriani or Steve Byer, whoever, like, what prevents you from doing that? What is it that, that, that is the glass ceiling there? And the other thing is I want to talk about is what are the steps that you can take to punch through that? Here's, here's the thing. It's really kind of not about your facility. Um, it's not about how you hold the pick. It's not about if you can solo over giant steps or not. It's not about these faults. Um, these false limitations that you build into yourself. Okay. And by that, I mean, we see, we wake up every day and we see anybody on YouTube just shredding. Like I watched, I watched a video of a guy the other day, like blowing over countdown, which is a really difficult John Coltrane tune. He's just blasting over, uh, countdown on a fretless guitar. And, and I go, what in the world did I just watch? You know, like, how is someone that good? And this goes around the bin. But innately, a lot of this stuff is being filmed at home. And it's 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 the thing where it's like, it's not online. It's not, uh, or sorry, sorry, it's not online. I didn't mean that. It's not, it's not live in a room like, um, like for instance, this week, I'm going to be doing all these clinics live and I'm doing two shows with Seth Rosenblum, one in New York at the city winery, one in Boston at a, at, at a place there, a venue there. And while I'm in New York, Satch and Vi is also play. They're also playing in New York and Andy Timmons is playing the Iridium. It's like everybody's playing live and they're doing it out live, right? The, the, the goal is to be playing out in front of people. It's like getting to that next level of, of, of career maybe is the right word. Next level of career. So what it's not is making a checklist of what you think validates you as a musician, um, as a guitar player. And it's not the fact that you can't play bluegrass like Jake Workman or you don't have the Southern thing like Brent Mason or Steve Morse or something like that. Or you can't slap, slap and tap like, uh, like Polyphia guys do, right? Or you can't. You can't, you're just making all these false things that are on your checklist that, that say, oh, well, this is why I'm not, I'm not making it. This is why I don't have, you know, uh, a, a successful career. Um, I had a, I had a message with, uh, or not a message I, I, on my Patreon. I do these, um, I do live mentorships. I do, like one of the top tiers that you can get as a mentorship with me. And that can be a lesson, but it's, it's more about a career guidance kind of thing. And I had a, a guy in there who's a great telly player. I'm not going to say his name because I think that would be in bad taste. But he's he's ta he's taken part of these classes, and um, he put together his album. And he was talking about you know trying to form his live show, and he said you know it's like I, I, the songs are are, are kind of short, and I'm having a hard time putting together a live show. I need another instrumentalist. I need a fiddle player to uh, 
to 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 trade solos with because the songs are short blah blah, blah. and i asked him point like i was like did you make your record as a business card and he goes yeah for sure i was like i made a list of all the things that that i can do i was like man you realize that that's not a musical statement that's 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 a demo tape to say hey i'm capable on the instrument and this guy's so good and he's got such a big following online. I was like, the world knows you can play guitar really well. We don't need that. We need to know what your musical statement is. So then I started bringing up examples of, of things that aren't difficult, quote unquote, to play. And, uh, and they're on albums that consist of high levels of virtuosity. Okay. And uh, I brought up Eric Johnson's tune, um, uh, I can't think of a trademark. Is it trademark? Like I brought up that tune as an example. Whoa, hey, I must have actually stepped on that mix level. There we go, yeah. So that's better, less less delay. Um, so I brought up that tune as an example. It's on an album with like Cliffs of Dover and Desert Rose and all those Highlanders and all this high level of virtuosity. But uh, trademark is a kind of a simple tune. But as the listener... This is like where I'm going, hey, pay attention. I'm going to say it loud for the people in the back of the room. As a listener, we don't listen to Trademark and diminish its value because it's not as hard to play as Highlanders or, or, or Desert Rose or Cliffs, right? We don't diminish the quality and the value of a song by Andy Timmons called Resolution because it's a little bit easier to play than uh, maybe headed for the ditch that's on the same album or, or 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 something like that, right? You don't diminish the the songs that are on Brent Mason's uh, album. The you know, let's look at the track listing here. I've got the uh, I got the transcription book here. It's track listing. Like Cayman Moon is a great tune. Blue Water Girl, Little Ballerina. These are great tunes that are not. Um, not hyper difficult in comparison to a tune like maybe uh, uh, Hot Wired, right? On the same record. So when you go, when these guys, Brent, uh, Satch, Fi, like when they go to build a show, they're choosing from a catalog of great songs. Now, this is the what I'm talking about, breaking through the glass ceiling. When you're Satriani or Ingve or Brent or Mark Letary or any of the guys we're talking about, Greg Cock, we don't sit around and talk about, you know, the minuscule things of how you hold your pick or like, we don't even really kind of, we look at each other's instruments and go, Hey man, that's cool. Let me try. Okay, cool. We look at these things as just, they're, they're just tools. The greater point to take away is what is the message? What is the, uh, what is the message in the music? Okay. That is the thing that helps you break through the glass ceiling. Okay, I'm going to say that again. That's that search of musical statement. That's what helps you raise your value as an artist because you're no longer playing your instrument to verify that you are accomplished at it. That's not what's important. I can't stress that enough. It's not being good at the instrument that validates you it's your song it's your song it's your statement what's the statement what 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 do you want to say if you could do anything on the instrument if you had all the chops in the world then what would you do would you sit around and play chops like julian lodge has this disgusting amount of chops but like when you hear him it's not about that it's scoped out from that it's scoped out to the point where it's like we're hearing the song and the statement and the and the um, the final embodiment of what your amp you're using, <laughs> what guitar you're playing, you know, what chords do you know, right? Like, like Joe Pass and Stevie Ray Vaughan, you're dealing. Let's let's talk about this for a second. So, so Joe Pass has an immense, immensely, you know, much much larger uh, harmonic vocabulary. Uh, those that don't know Joe Pass, the great jazz guitars, is a much larger harmonic vocabulary than Stevie Ray Vaughan. But it doesn't matter because they both have an equally large musical statement. Stevie's musical statement was encapsulated in 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 the song and the sound and the the wasn't the chop, 
wasn't the, the, the chop. It wasn't, it was, it was the song. The song's what matters, right? That's what matters. And in today's TikTok brain, Instagram world, um, we're looking through sitting there scrolling on, on a countless, countless amounts of just vulgar display of chops. Every day I'm just like, what did Baxty post that's insane? You know, what what did uh I think I think his name's Mike Gannon. What did Mike Gannon in Nashville post on on slide guitar that's gonna make me throw up because it's so good? Um, you know, what's Guthrie Govan doing today? Like they like every day there's just chops. I mean, there's guys less Guthrie Govan's not really the example that I'm talking about because he has this huge body of work. Um, but when we do that we're looking at all these things as checklists. Well, I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not ready to make my record yet. And it's a, it's a mother flipping excuse. Like it's an excuse. It's a self induced excuse on why you haven't made your statement yet. You go, I'm not good enough. Says who says who, right? Was Jeff Buckley, the guitarist that, 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 uh, Guthrie Govan is no, that, does he have an equally monumental, I mean, equally is not even the right word, right? Like, does he have a monumental statement to music? Absolutely. You know, can Jason Isbell play the slide guitar at the velocity of terrifying expertise that Derek Trucks can? No. But does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. So stop putting this wall on yourself, Right. Your first record, and I did it. I'm the I'm guilty for it. I, I went down on disconcerting amalgam and I went through and I just made a checklist. Okay, there's song and odd time signatures. Okay, there's a seven string song. Okay, I can prove that I can do metal. Okay, there's the fast chicken picket song, shred neck. Like I made all of these things. And you know my favorite song on that record is the one that's just just uh, it's the one that goes like That's the best song on my first record best song on the record now i don't think it's the most complicated or anything but i think it's the most well written it's the one that i feel like i could drop into a show today and uh it fit in with the things that i'm doing um that that's the uh that's the the topic and, and i think what helped me get through the glass ceiling like i think shredneck is a well-written chicken picking song but we don't need an album full of fast train beat because again if it's if every song on your album is a fast train beat shred next type song then none of them are special all you've done is made the same thing 10 times in 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 different keys with different hot licks it's the, it's not it's like the hot licks are great they don't make the song good let me roll through a couple of things about my new record i'm not saying that my new record is is the greatest record in guitar instrumental. What I am going to say is I think it's the greatest record that I've ever made. And I think what makes it that way is not the chops. Obviously, that song that I played at the beginning of the show. I mean, that right there is still pretty just on the, on the clean show. sense right like that's a that's totally um 
like a, a, a song that, that works. So if I play the rest of the album, let me open up the backing tracks where I take a look at the album. I'm just going to play a little piece of everything, right? So one song is... Uh, <laughs> Another song on the album is uh, kind of got this kind of vibe. Uh... Okay, uh, another song I'm looking at them is the Free Range Chicken. It's got the, that kind of thing, right? And I mean, another one is... Uh melodies that, that maintain without the chops, right? this record i just looked at the backing tracks i just played a little piece of every song and at no point did i get into the shreddy parts of the song because they don't make the song the song is the is the the melodic content and the hook and and that's the thing to me that i hang my hat on as far as my statement what has helped propelled me in my career to get to a point where, you know, it's a signature model guitars and tours and, and, and doing the thing, like really getting out there and, and, and grinding it out and doing it right. These are the aspects of what I see when I look across the landscape and the ecosystem of the guitar industry and the music industry as a whole. The ones that punch through the ceiling are the ones that know what their statement is, regardless of their level of technical facility upon the instrument how do you break out of the minor leagues 
Don't worry about how your hand looks or how somebody holds their pick. Like, I mean, you, 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 you simply just got to search for the one that feels right for you. Use the one that feels right. Paul Gilbert uses a much thinner pick than I do. And it totally works for him. It doesn't make him right and me wrong or me right and him wrong. Like none of that stuff matters. What matters is how good the, uh, how good the statement of the song is. That's my, that's my spiel. That's my spiel. It doesn't matter how fast you can do You can't do it up to speed. Like not everybody needs to worry about writing the next cruise control or too many notes. It's not about the speed. It's not. Chris Stapleton can't play fast. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Right? Jeff Beck wasn't known for blistering speed. It didn't matter. Because the thing that he was dialed into was his sound. That's the thing. The sound. The statement. The song. What's a great song? I mean, I I got one cover on the new record. such a great song. song that's why it's on the record and that's why it's the only cover on the record it's like just fit with the statement of the music and and speed is i see some comments speed is fun but it's not always going to sell cds or be sustainable in front of folk i think it's the thing that like if you go see tommy emmanuel you want to see him play fast at some point but i don't want to see him play fast for 90 minutes like, I don't want Hot for Teacher for 90 minutes. Like, I love when Van Halen does a boogie, like a fast boogie. Like, I'm the one. But I don't want, I'm the one for two hours, right? It's like, I need to hear The Cradle Will Rock. I need to hear Right Now. Like, Right Now is such a great song. <laughs>
that's such a great song. And and it, within that album, yeah, we have the Judgment Day. We are what is it? Like all of that stuff is on that record, that 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 unlawful carnal knowledge, right? But it's not. It's the. That's what makes the record great, you know, to me, you know. Uh, It's great. The the ornamentation's great, but nothing super difficult to play there. Um, it's just it's just all. I mean, Jerry Cantrell. I see right now, not your brother says Jerry Cantrell um, doesn't shred that much, but it's like the greatest hooks. Oh yeah. what connects with with other humans on a language linguistic level that's how you break through the glass ceiling Did jerry cantrell have van halen's chops no but did, was he able to find his voice and his music and get it out absolutely and i think more people and this is what i'm going to say i think more people have the ability to write and create and make great music but they don't because they're dealing with imposter syndrome they don't think they're good enough they think their statement's not good enough because they can't play as fast as Ingbe or they they think their statement's not good enough because now Mateo Mancuso's out there and he's doing all this like finger style stuff they're like well I can't do it or my statement's not good enough because I can't play over chord changes like Tom Quill that stuff doesn't matter it makes Tom Tom but it's not going to make you you right like that's how that's how you break through that's how you get to the next next level of yourself and, and become a better player because you're not if you know you're not you're not obsessed with these minuscule details obsess over the melody what makes a great melody what makes a great 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 rhythm what makes a good feeling groove acdc made the same record 11 times <laughs> It wasn't the same record, but it was the same record, right? Van Halen 1 and 2 are the same record. They're not the same record, but they're the same record, right? It's the same musical statement. Now, when did it become a different musical statement? I mean, you know, 1984 is a pretty big jump. That's a pretty big leap into a different musical statement for, for Van Halen, the band, right? You guys see what I'm kind of dialing into and what I'm getting getting you guys to hopefully... I'm trying to provoke some thought here. I'm trying to lift the um, lift the perception up. I'm trying to lift uh, the, the self perception up. Make make you realize that 
you don't have to be able to blast out chicken picking stuff like Danny Gatton or something or John Jorgensen to have a value as a songwriter and have a value as a player. Uh, Robert says delay settings. These, this is the Andy Timmons halo delay, and this is preset number one. And it's the stock preset. And then the only other preset I use is one that I made that's a uh, kind of a country kind of preset. I'm reading the comments. I'm not zoning out. I'm just reading the comments. I'm going to scroll up and just look. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Dave Durango. I like your little pink dinosaur thing. It's pretty great. I like to see the, uh, just heads up, I like to see the little emojis. If you guys ever want to put like, you know, the pink dinosaurs, you know, dragons and swords and stuff. I like all that. I like seeing that in the chat. Um, Steve Lukather is a great example of this, taking us to church. Uh, Paul's saying, man, I couldn't imagine my life without guitar. It brings so much joy. And I feel sad for those that go through life without feeling the emotional connection you can have with an instrument. Absolutely. So now it's like, what are you going to do with that emotional connection? What are you going to die? What are you going to deliver? What are you going to give? Um, what are you going to say that your statement is that day? You know, and, and, and it doesn't have to be something elaborate. It can be very simple. The statement of the day doesn't have to be something complex. It can be very, very simple. <laughs> single note that's a great melody man that's a timeless melody and and that's the kind of thing that you don't have to have all this elaborate harmony to deliver you know it doesn't have to be but it doesn't have to be. That's what you got to get out of your, out of your psyche. Um, learning to improve your, 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 your mastery of your craft is, is great because you want to become, you don't want barriers between your playing, your, your imagination and your, and your, and your instrument. You don't want those barriers. Now I'm not saying ignore practicing and technical facility, but what I am saying is like, don't get obsessed to the point that you can't have a, you can't, you can't make your, 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 your statement you can't you can't focus on yourself and be like well what can i play what can i do um dustin's saying i can't translate what's in my head into my hands the simple start with one chord start with one basic chord right um let's try that's, too, that's a bad key for me let's put it down maybe singer right you just start with one chord move it up an octave is just decoration it's all just knowing one chord you like what's an interesting note right there Five. you know it's like i was almost teasing the couple of different melodies 
Um, it's like I was teasing around the melody of the Dolly Parton I Will Always Love You verse. I was also teasing around the melody of the uh, um, uh, Nesun Dormo. That thing, right? play it from memory I'm trying not to mess it up that makes that really great yeah okay Rondé says what is the most difficult thing for you when initially transitioning from mandolin guitar string gauge tuning yeah i mean just the tuning of it right because the tuning of mandolin is uh it's inverted from guitar um the mandolin tuning is in fifths and the guitar is in uh you know fourths for the most part <laughs> to, to a point till, till it becomes a booger Right. Um, let me get some of this crap off the strings. Woo! I'm going to need some new strings on this thing before we head out. Also, I'll be, in, uh, be playing in uh, Charlotte tomorrow at the Midwood Guitar Studios. Be playing in uh, New York and Boston this week with Seth Rosenblum. It's going to be great. Make sure to go to andywoodmusic.com to get those dates and ticket links as things. I'll be posting on my social medias here in just a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, so here we go. I'm checking out some more questions here. Andy, will you be able to provide for t tabs for the CD for the purchase for the new album? Absolutely, Taylor. I have the transcriptions available. I have tab in PDF format and I also have Guitar Pro. So you'll be able to learn all the notes. And I verified those transcriptions. I didn't just get Levi Clay to do it. We got together and verified um, all, the, all the stuff on the album. So it's really, really great. Um, speed does cause excitement. Absolutely, Pookie. Speed is excitement, but if everything's fast, then it's not exciting. So it's how do you use it? Speed is like using a, a, a ghost pepper or, or a really hot chili or a habanero or something. Yeah, you, you, you want that. You want that heat. I just had Thai food for lunch. I'm excited. It's like hot. I like that heat. But if it's so hot that I don't taste any other flavor, then it, that it's no good. You know? Uh, Joe says, I think writing songs is a skill that must be practiced all the time. Do you sit down to write something every day, Andy? Absolutely, Joe. You just saw me do it in real time with that little D major melody. Paul Vanova says, Tommy's fast is different from Paul Gilbert's fast, though. I mean, yes and no. I think Tommy can do some insanely fast finger-picking rolls where Paul is a flat pick guy. So the, you know, the note per note per measure you know you can really it can be measured out but it's, it's just a flavor it's about the song like when we want to hear tommy it's like i want to hear him play classicals and gas right like i want to hear him play um the beatles stuff he does like lady madonna and stuff. like it's a great 
Um, these, this is my thought on breaking through and getting through, uh, getting through the, 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 out of the minor leagues. That's how you get to the, this is how, in my opinion, one gets to the major leagues. And I'm gonna leave you with these couple of thoughts. Let's say you've practiced for 20 years and you're ready to go on stage and you're ready to like make your, make your statement to the world. What are you going to play? Are you just going to play stuff that's over a backing track? Are you going to play something that's just uh, a cover of something else? You're going to do that for 90 minutes. Of course not. That's of course, that's silly, right? You've got to have your songs. That's what makes the, uh, that's what makes the, the experience worth having is the song. West Smith with West says, Andy, it seems like you designed your hum hum telly as a Swiss army knife gig solution. If so, is there a reason you chose not to use a middle pickup? Yeah, absolutely. Wes, it is. And the reason is I don't like the way a middle pickup feels under my pick. Um, I, I like I, when you hit the pick, I don't like that feeling. And I, and, I, and obviously I deal with it on some guitars, um, strats, you know, mostly, but like, yeah, I, I, I hate the feeling of hitting my pick on the middle pickup. So that's why Johnny Layton says, come for the live Andy Timmons, copyright violation shred stayed for the questions and insight. Um, did, did we get, did we get, I don't play, I didn't play any Andy Timmons copy copyright violation. Yeah, there's no, there's no, I didn't, I don't think I've played any Andy Timmons today. Um, let's solve that. Um, <laughs> Just, did you hear that pop? <laughs> right, right when you didn't want it to. Let's let's tune that. Yeah, the string got caught. Must have been when I was wiping the strings. Yeah, there's some Andy Timmons or. Uh... go so now johnny's happy he says i came for the live andy timmons copyright violation. now we've truly hit the copyright violation um <laughs> there we go he says sorry i just arrived and your improv before reminded me of andy timmons <laughs> yeah so now we've actually now i've made you happy i fulfilled the but okay let's take just a second to acknowledge something i don't cover andy timmons songs <laughs> I, I love him and he has been one of the most prolific figures in my musical journey. Andy, if you ever see this, man, thank you for all that you've done for me. Um, he's been a mentor uh, far more than he realizes, you know, and, and, and that goes for several guys, that really important people in my life, that, that they don't realize how important they are. Brent Mason's another one. Like, these guys have been monumental in helping me find my voice, not because I want to <laughs> cover their stuff, but because they like looking at what they value, like Timmons can play anything. That guy can play anything he wants to. So the fact that he chooses to make a, a musical statement down a certain path and, and has something in mind that's, that's not trying to keep up with the, the orbiting things around him in the guitar circles. It's just him doing his thing and he's focused on making his thing that that's, that's what's beautiful. And that allows him to, to reach. And, and, and that's why he's a major league player. That's why Brent Mason is a major league player. Right. Um, it's, it's really about, uh, it's really about that. So, so, you know, thanks to those guys for that, but like his songs are so melodically powerful that I don't have to, I don't have to look up a tab to know how to play them. Like this melody is just fantastic. 
It's a 2-5-1 in G minor. Sort of. I don't know what's next. Is it uh, something like that? No, that's not right. I, I don't know the voicing he uses. Um, but like... Uh, that's a, that's a powerful melody, and I don't have to I don't have to look it up, right? Um, you know, Brent's the same way. It's like Brent's melodies are are so great. Um, it, it's like you don't have to search very hard to 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 know where they are because they're so they're so big. The melodies are so big in your head. You know, you can just kind of know what they are. Um, yeah. Boom, Boomster Black says, what brought me here in the first place was the statement. Make your statement. Mine is of authenticity as well as everything else. That's the that's the thing you've got to go for. And and even though you think you're, here's what I would say is like, if you're already hip to what I'm talking about, uh, and this is something that I'm not just talking about today, but it's just something I've, you know, I kind of subscribe to all the time. Um, if you're already hip to it, it's like every day you've got to drill deeper into what makes your statement you. right? Like drill down to the next level. What's the next level that makes you, you. And when I play by myself and I'm sitting here and I don't have a band, uh, I tend to play a lot more simple. I play a lot more melodically. Um, and I think about these things and I play simple ballady type of stuff. And that's how I wrote some things on the new record. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and play the whole thing, but that's the, uh, that, that kind of came from a place of just writing simple stuff, just coming with melodies, right? And taking that melody, putting it instead of here, going to a different place. You have a little Kodo licks and stuff. I mean, there's a lot of that in the, uh, stuff and it's so easier on the back pickup. That's how I'm doing it, right? Like a pick, harmonic, pinky, harmonic. That's how I'm doing those, right? 
players love the flash, but crowds love the melody. Crowds love flash too, but you don't want to just keep serving flash. You know, I think we love garlic as a flavor, but we don't want it on everything. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's the same kind of thing, right? Like one of my favorite colors is red, but I don't want everything red. I don't want red everything. I got to have green and blue and, 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 and pink and these other, these other shades, yellow. You know, it's like, that's the way I look at it. And I think that's a little off topic. To me, it's, it's the topic is not what you choose to play with the top. And it's not a matter of playing melodically versus playing fast. Right. Cause I can, I can, I can definitely say that Ingve's statement is to play fast and he's Ingve Malmstein and he's going to headline shows. Right. It's, it's a matter of, this is what I want to talk about. And I want to want to re restate. You don't have to play fast to make your statement. If your statement's playing fast, great. You don't have to know every chord in the world to make your statement. You can make your statement with three chords, four chords. Look at Merle Haggard and Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson. Like these guys didn't have a massive jazz vocabulary of of, of George Benson knowledge, <laughs> right? They didn't, but it wasn't the point. So. Yeah, that's that's kind of like that's to me is like how you get get out of the out of the minor leagues. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, yeah, that'll do it for today. We've done a lot of a lot of things. I'm just checking the chat to make sure there's no closing statements here. Johnny Layton says, can't say enough how your work has changed the game for us pickers. Man, cheers. That's really that's really the thing. I want to help you become a better player, but more importantly, I want to help you become a better musician. And and I want that because I want to hear inspiring music that I that 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 so it's like the more people that are making music, the more chances there are that something can inspire me too. And uh yeah, that's that's at the forefront for me. Yeah. Jacob Collier is no shredder, but he can play because he's a musician. Jacob Collier is, I, I, I think he is a shredder, you know, it's like, but it's just a different thing. Hey man, are you the cat who snuck into the school to meet Dan Huff? I absolutely, I am. I did sneak into, uh, 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 Belmont. This is funny. I was probably 19 or 20 and I had a friend going to Belmont. No, I was, I was probably 20. I was probably 20 or 21 and I had a friend going to Belmont. And she said, hey, your, your guitar hero's coming today. And Dan, at this point, was doing uh, producing. And I said, wow, man, I'd give anything to go. And she goes, well, why don't you just sneak in and we'll, you can use my card. So when swiped in, snuck in, watched his whole thing. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was really, really cool. Um, Dan was standing there at the end of the thing. I had taken a pit guard and I was like, Hey man, can you sign this? And the Dean was next to me. He goes, yeah, you, did you not read your, uh, manual or handbook? Uh, we, we don't ask guests to sign things. I said, Oh, sorry. And Dan interrupted. He goes, no, nah, man, it's cool. It's cool. He goes, you play guitar. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. You know, I listen to giant stuff. He goes, wow, cool. Yeah. And he said, so what kind of guitar do you play? And I was like, Oh, you know, I was like, I've got some Anderson's and stuff. And he's like, Oh man, you should check out this thing called a diesel. And right behind me, that diesel Herbert, I bought it because of Dan Huff. Um, and obviously not that same day because I was broke, broke as hell at the time. So, so broke, I couldn't do anything. But uh, later on in life, I got it. But yeah, Dan uh, looked at me, he goes, no, nah, that's cool. And I, I, lean, I leaned over and I was like, man, I don't even go to school here. And he goes, what? And I was like, yeah, man, you're just my favorite. And I just kind of snuck in. He goes, wow, that's amazing. So yeah, that's, that's it, right? Um, Joe Nardell says, what will your show in New York city be like? Are you backing up in Seth's band or are you opening for Seth doing your own stuff? Um, I'm not sure the order, like for some reason, I think Seth is going, I, I think Seth's going to go first. Um, and I think it goes Seth, then me, then we're going to play together. Um, but yeah, I'm doing tunes off the new record. Um, I'm using Seth's band. So yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, Dustin says, can I ask you a side question? The vein of musicianship, what sort of doll plugins are you using? I use logic. Um, and as far as plugins, they're very minimal. I, I try to get the sound that I want before 
getting into plugin world, um, you know, I, 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 I'm tracking more than I'm actually mixing. So I'm not using a lot of mixed plugins, but things like, uh, Heaviosity, uh, the vast plugin by Heaviosity is really great. It's a reverb engine and, uh, it's really, really great. So check that out. That's my new favorite thing. So check out the Heaviosity stuff. Um, Joe Narduli says, uh, oh, sorry. I just got that one, Joe. Sorry. Wes says, Hey Andy, would love to see you play the silver telly in the next video. What a great looking guitar. Cheers, Wes. It's, it's tuned down a half step. So, um, I, that's why I play the brown one. The brown one is for standard. The silver one's tuned down a half step. So maybe if we do some Van Halen or something, I could do it. Um, Johnny says, have you heard Bela Fleck's latest record? I've not. I did love my bluegrass heart though. I thought my bluegrass heart was a spectacular album. Spectacular. So thank you, Bela, for that music. Um, again, you know, those songs are so good, right? It's, it's, it's bigger than the chops. Uh, you know, I challenge you all to go listen to your favorite records and uh, you'll be surprised that you love the song long before the shredding starts, right? Yeah, like Erotic Cakes. Those songs are great before the solos even happen, right? Jonathan says, Andy, do you use a selection pick plectrum sizes? Do you prefer to save one? So when I'm on electric guitar, I'll use these live. These are... Uh, Planet Waves, the Diodario Planet Waves picks. And then I use my um, blue chip picks in the studio because these are so expensive, I can't throw them out in the audience. And then for acoustic, I use these bigger picks. And then I also use um, multiple picks. So here's another one that I use. So on acoustic instruments, I use different picks to change the tone. Um, that's kind of like my EQ, my EQ section. Tim Henson's doing a solo album. Should be interesting to see what he comes up with. Yeah, I mean, I, he sounds like Tim Henson. I can imagine what kind of thing it's going to be like, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, it's it's it's. I I I'm sure it's going to be great. Like Tim's a very creative guy, very very creative. Um, Sahar says, uh, "Can you tell I like Vi?" Yeah, I mean, yeah, like everybody likes Vi. You know what I mean? Um, cheers, everyone! Thank you for an amazing live stream. I hope it was educational. And I hope it uh, was inspiring in a way that you can uh, realize that horsepower doesn't equal a great, great musical statement. You don't have to be Shredder Supreme to make something that stands right there with it. You know what I mean? Like, like I've, I've used tons of examples. You don't like Jason Isbell's not a Shredder, but man, his statement is right there with any Shredder on the planet. You know? Yeah. Fishbulb says, thanks for the these and the Patreon. I can't practice enough to get where I want, but I love hanging the information there and we'll work on it. Yeah, for those that love the channel, um, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. If you're having a good time and you like it and you enjoy these live streams and these episodes, uh, please hit like and subscribe. Uh, if you are interested in taking your playing uh, to the next level uh, beyond just the content that I make for free, think about doing patreon.com slash Music. For five dollars a month, uh, you get access to God seven hundred videos, something like that. Um, for twenty five dollars a month, you get to take part in our live master classes that I do on Zoom. I'll be doing them live from the clinics this week, uh, which is going to be really fun. I might even open up my phone and do them from from uh, from the shows, but those will be exclusive to Patreon. Uh, Patreon also has, you know, uh, access to listen to the new record early for Patreon members. Um, so there's some, uh, some good perks over there. And for five bucks a month, you know, you can throw, uh, you can throw a beer my way you, know, you can buy me a beer <laughs> on Patreon. And, uh, that, that that's most appreciated because that's the way that I'm able to keep uh, sustainability and keep doing these live streams. And that's the way that I've been able to shift into this world. So I appreciate the support on that. Chuck's got it right there. Um, thank you so much, everyone be blessed. Have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.